Hi, I'm Tracy Swedlow, and this is Television Nation. I am really happy to have a friend of TVOT here, Mike O'Donnell, who is SVP Platform Business from Vizio, the manufacturer of TV sets, those big screens that we all have in our houses. I see one right behind you, Mike. Welcome yep. to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's actually uh, interesting timing. Uh, just as we're starting this, torrential downpour just hit New Jersey here. So you may <laughs> you may hear it in the background. If there's the thunder and lightning, the maybe. Of shelter in place. Okay. You know, doesn't it always feel comfortable when it's raining outside and you're sort of forced to be inside? And Yeah. Do you have um, a fireplace or anything to keep you I cozy? Got... Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> We got okay. that. Yeah. Yeah. This is like a good sales pitch. You could turn on the TV, turn on the fireplace. This is a good time to, to stream content through your Vizio, uh, Vizio television. That would actually be a really good backdrop for you behind your yeah. head. Yeah. <laughs> I should do that. Okay. Good idea. So tell me what your home setup like. What, you know, what, what are you doing there? How is your, your shelter in place experience? Uh, you know, I, I, I like to say good, all things considered. I mean, it's uh, it's interesting. I'm uh, I'm out here in New Jersey. Uh, I uh, I have three young children, which has made uh, which has made working uh, during the day interesting. As we we go through homeschooling, a first grader and a kindergartner with a 20 month rolling around. So uh, so it's it's been interesting. But all things considered, uh, you know, it's it's been fine. But I don't hear any screaming. I don't hear no. any like you know chaos <laughs> no no we got no i i live in fear though in all of this that at some point somebody's going to show up behind me <laughs> well um luckily my daughter's 12 and she's pretty self-directed so and yeah. um, she's up in her room so that's good it's usually the dog that comes yeah, in and carries good. on yeah all right so what's going on i know you uh you announced a smart cast right at um sure. tbot and we want to hear a little bit about what's going on and how Vizio is able to um, really understand some of the trends that are happening in these uh, this environment of COVID-19. It's very complicated how people are tracking it. We have been talking to various companies. Everyone's got a different angle. And of course, Vizio has the ability through ACR technology, uh, you know, to hear, to see what what's going on. So um, what's happening and how are you guys all keeping things together now that you're not able to work in the office. Yeah. I mean, it, it's been a, it's been an interesting time for us because uh, while, uh, while there's been obviously a lot of challenges across the board um, in the marketplace, specifically in the media business, I think in the, in the realm of streaming, uh, it's been an interesting moment, right? We've seen streaming numbers uh, on our platform, you know, skyrocket and go through the roof as people are, you know, are home. Uh, there, I, I think we've seen since pre shelter in place till now about a 77% increase in usage sessions to our, our smartcast platform. So people just going into them, we're seeing, you know, like a 74% increase in people using ad supported apps, right. Uh, alone. So, uh, it's been an interesting time for search and discovery within, uh, within the streaming world. Uh, so for us, we've been, you know, We've been adjusting, but also kind of capturing, capturing as much data as possible. You mentioned earlier, uh, you know, we've got ACR built into the televisions. We're through our partners at, at Inkscape um, that enable us to see see what people are viewing, whether that be in the linear space or the or the streaming environment. And uh, we've had the ability to, you know, help help uh, customers of Vizio find some new content. Um, we we launched. 30 new free streaming channels out into the marketplace uh, during this time. We rushed them to market uh, just to try to get new content, new opportunities into the hands of our consumers. Do you have um, like what, what are some of those channels? So we, we've launched a, a whole slew. We, we look at a bunch of the different categories and we've got um, everything from uh, from some entertainment like a TMZ channel to uh, to do it yourself to uh, to d design network. Um, to some food channels uh, that, that we've brought onto the platform, to the USA Today for news. So we're looking at what people are watching and what they're looking to find more content for. Uh, and we're pushing to bring some of those new free channels into the into the fold. Did you rush channels specifically that you felt were 
relevant for the times or, you know, the kind of content people wanted based on your tracking? Uh, yeah. I mean, we, uh, look, I think we have, uh, we have the, we're the second largest smart TV manufacturer in the U S so we have a broad scope in terms of interest from our consumers. So we're, we are, we do see the shift during this time. Obviously there's no sports, right? Uh, so we're, we're, we're trying to bring some new sports content into the fold. Um, so for, for those consumers following those trends, uh, we know people are getting a lot of news. But we do want to bring as much uh, as much additional news uh, news content to the fold, and then for us, we're starting to see our consumers branch out uh, into more of what we call, you know, uh, the do-it-yourself. Uh, we see our, our customers looking at fitness categories, more into the kids and family um, things that uh, I would say types of content that maybe wouldn't get as much usage uh, pre-shelter in place. But now people are searching and discovering and finding. That they have those uh, the, the, that type of content is available on smart TVs. Well, I want, to, um, I want everyone to understand the scope of of what you guys are doing. Uh, I believe you have about fifteen million sets out there, or that that you're that you're you're tracking it at any one time. Is that about right? Yeah, we about uh, fourteen million uh, from an Inkscape perspective that we have the ability to to recognize what 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 viewers are watching. And the SmartCast. Uh, app that's watching um, what people are watching for ads is I think about 10 million. It, so, so the way, the way we look at it is um, SmartCast is our operating system. So it's the operating system that's built within every Vizio, uh, Vizio television set that's sold today. We launched SmartCast as an operating system itself in late 2016. Uh, and we've continued to, to have some evolutions of that at this point. Uh, we have uh, SmartCast as a platform in a, in a tremendous position. We continue to win awards based on consumer experience. And that, that's really where the, the focus for us is. Uh, so we're continuing to bring new content to the fold. We're, we're, we've launched a direct sales team, as you referenced earlier, um, to, to start to bring solutions for advertisers, agencies, and brands. And from a, just from a scale perspective, since 2016, now we're at about uh, almost 11 million active smart TV users or smart cast users. And the the new ads network, how's that doing? Uh, it's, uh, I mean, how's it doing? It's, it's doing well. We've launched, uh, we launched the ads uh, a few months ago, uh, going direct, uh, direct to clients and obviously uh, uh, launching and I think it was uh, in November, uh, we have we have started to, to ramp up pretty well in this space. I think, uh, especially during this time, as more viewership's coming, as there's more interest from agencies and brands and what's happening within the streaming space, uh, I think it's uh, given us an opportunity to help drive a lot of thought leadership in the space. Um, so so things, have been, things have been going well. It's such an, a complex environment, right? Because on one hand, some advertisers are pulling out and waiting yeah. for the you know a better environment, a better environment. Who who knows when that will be? Yeah. Um, and other advertisers are saying, you know what, this is an opportunity to stay visible, to stay active, to retool their messaging. We are definitely seeing, uh, you know, uh, thoughtful, uh, aggressive advertisers who are 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 not are not pulling back their dollars. So. Yeah, uh, I, it, it's interesting. Is that, is that true for you? Do you? Are you seeing that sort of mix? Yeah, I mean, uh, for us, uh, you know, we see there's certain categories that, you know, are continuing to invest and continuing to, to, to spend. You know, we're seeing retail, we're seeing CPG um, investing. Uh, from a, from a tune-in perspective, uh, obviously on our platform, a tune-in entertainment, we're seeing... Uh, a lot of momentum on that front. People are trying to figure out what to watch. So opportunities for search and discovery, especially within our home screen. Um, uh, we've seen advertisers uh, uh, support. And then, uh, and then we also see categories that you know, are, are challenged. Um, and that's no different for us than the rest of the marketplace. I mean, travel is challenged, QSR. There's, there, there's several uh, categories that as a whole are just challenged with what's going on. And yeah, those, those, those dollars are not, are not flowing through. You'd think in some ways that travel, at least watching travel would be a, a, um, 
but have growth because people want to escape perhaps or see what's going on. On the other hand, it sounds like people are becoming more practical about what they do in their personal environment, doing DIY, you know, watching DIY shows and cooking and fitness and things like that. Well, okay, yeah. so I'm, I'm definitely also curious. I know you've been uh, doing a lot of tracking of what um, people are watching and especially the sports category. That's what everybody wants to know, right? What are these? Yeah. What are these? Um, sports viewers doing without sports? Uh, what are they doing? Yeah, I, I think for us, it's been interesting. Well, one, we found that sports viewers are still looking for sports. Uh, I, I think it's interesting, the, the number one live streamed uh, program over the past two nights has been uh, The Last Dance, the Michael Jordan, uh, the, the Michael Jordan documentary on ESPN. We see fans are still going to to their favorite sports networks, looking and watching classic games and things of that nature. But uh, we're starting to see some some sports fans um, dive out. I think we saw 10 percent based on our Inkscape report of, of sports fans that with no sports have stopped watching linear altogether, moved into the streaming world. Right. So we're, we're, we're seeing some of that transition of uh, of viewership. And then I think we're also seeing, you know, more of that search and discovery, right. Uh, that we, we referenced earlier, sports fans are trying to find where they can watch classic games, but then they're diving deeper into other entertainment categories like dramas and comedies. Um, would you say when they do in, when they are looking, would you say that they find what they want fairly quickly? Do they drop out? Is it sort of, do they feel frustrated? They're not finding what they want or is it, do they just, like you said, land on drama and comedy? Are you seeing any of that kind of behavior? Uh, I think from, from our perspective, we're just seeing where they, where they ultimately end up. Uh, I, I don't know about the frustration uh, in the process, but we are seeing that they are doing a lot more search and discovery. Right. And I think it's, you know, uh, it's probably good for them. They need a little texture. Well, there's we see the you know? <laughs> the actual viewership. Look, I you know uh, for 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 those sheltering in place, there's you know uh, there's work and there's watch TV, right? So I think there's we're seeing a lot more time spent, as I referenced earlier, just on the platform in general. So uh, there's going to be more, way more opportunities to find new programs, find new apps, uh, and find new channels that maybe uh, they hadn't currently been watching because they've been so focused on sports. Are you able to parse out, uh, you know, if it's a, a sports viewer versus their kids sitting in the room navigating? I mean, obviously you can see what shows they're popping to, but uh, do, do you, are you seeing more adult viewership or more uh, family viewership? I think uh, I, I think that's Maybe a, it's a different different day parts, right? Yeah, based on different day parts, yeah, we're seeing uh, we're, we're we're seeing different trends, and we we have all of that data that we've been. Um, sharing out. I don't have any right now off the top of my head from a family, from a family perspective, uh, but we are meaning a specific data point, but uh, we are seeing a significant increase in family viewership. And uh, the way we look at that is kind of twofold. One, the ability to identify that uh, through content. Um, uh, and we're seeing a lot of that as we referenced in the upticks in kids and family programming, family viewing, uh, interesting things like, um, you know, Trolls 2 being able to, to stream live. Uh, so, so new opportunities that are focused or centered around uh, family viewing, uh, we're, we're seeing an uptick. Are you, um, are you able to see what they're, if they're navigating over to YouTube and things like that? Uh, we don't have that. We just see what they're doing over on, on our platform. Now, they, we, we, we can tell if they're diving into the YouTube app on our platform. Yeah. So have you seen anything in particular that has impressed you, something that shocked you, something that you felt was, um, you know, that stood out as unusual in this environment? I don't, you, you know, I, I don't know if it's anything that that necessarily shocked me, uh, but it's just that the the data has backed up uh, what, what you would expect to happen, right? And by that, I mean, the data has supported the fact that people are streaming just a significant amount more, that the data has supported the fact that they're uh, looking for more free. We're seeing that uptick in AVOD where, where we're seeing consumers diving more into where can I explore and find new free content uh, on, on the platform. And then uh, what's interesting to me, I think, is 
kind of uh, the data that supports where people like sports viewers like we shared are going when they're not, you know, not necessarily have the ability to watch sports. Now, I know I was looking at a report you recently did that uh, NBA viewers mm -hmm. were going to uh, programming. Uh, there was a hip hop thing in Atlanta. I sure. Saw. Um, but then the NCAA people were going to the news. We're going to news programming. So like why those two different audiences, it's, they're both basketball. So like, yeah. I mean, I was like, I mean, I mean, that's more of like a, a basketball culture question, but I was kind of, it was kind of curious. I know yeah. sports program, sports, sports viewers are definitely navigating to news a lot, but that it seemed odd. I just thought I'd bring that up. Yeah. Look, I think it's, it's interesting. Some of it I think has to do with, um, you know, the, the breadth of audience that uh, March Madness has during that time period, um, uh, as well as probably the, 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 the timing, right? Of, when you would be viewing March Madness or when you're looking to replace uh, in terms of what's on. But uh, but yeah, those are those are interesting. You know, we saw crossover viewing was number one for NBA fans was was love and hip hop. And number one for, you know, uh, NC tournament viewers was 60 minutes. So uh, that's I mean, it sounds like an, um, an younger versus older audience. But I would have thought would have been the reverse. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah. Why would they go into net in 60 minutes? Sounds like an older audience, NCAA. Yeah, look, I think it's just the, uh, my opinion would be the, the the wide range of audience in terms of uh, the NCAA tournament that runs kind of across the spectrum. It's probably, yes. I, I'm not a basketball. Excuse slightly, old, excuse slightly <laughs> older than, uh, than, than the average NBA fan. Do you, um, do you have any feelings as to if this is, you know, I, like will affect the industry going forward uh, or are your customers asking you specific questions about what they are that they want to do um yeah. you know in the months ahead i mean what, what are you hearing about how they plan what you know what what's their strategy of several months down the road yeah look that, that's the interesting piece right now is I, I i think we're in such an unprecedented time that there's so many unknowns i mean i think uh uh, on all sides, whether it be our content partners or, you know, brands and agencies, uh, they've been infect affected in different ways. Um, you know, whether that be on the content side, being able to produce new original content, you know, with challenges with production or, you know, on brands and agencies, obviously with the, the e economic impact of what's occurred. Uh, I think there's a, there's a lot of plans out there. I think what's, what's interesting from our end is we, we continue to kind of focus on two things uh, in, in terms of what we think we can kind of control in this in this marketplace, and that is one driving you know the best consumer experience. So on the content side, we're going to continue to push on finding new partners, continue to to uh, look at the data we have available to try to bring great content to our our consumers because we know that'll that'll ultimately in the long long run uh, be the best thing for our platform. Uh, and then secondarily, I think for the advertisers and brands, I mean, we're, we're, we're doing what we can from a thought leadership perspective to share what's happening in the space. There's no doubt. This is a, uh, this is a big moment for streaming, right? Just by the nature, uh, uh, the shift to, uh, the shift of all these eyeballs into streaming, all the search and discovery, getting to, to learn new apps. Uh, getting uh, consumers getting better acclimated with free content and what free content's available and how to navigate through the system. Uh, uh, we believe it's going to have a, a, a long lasting impact on the marketplace and is going to help accelerate uh, what we think is that continued shift into streaming that the, the industry's seen, uh, seen a little bit thus far. We think it will help accelerate it, you know, post, post COVID, or post shelter in place. Well, um, I'm speaking of uh, the platform. Kind of curious. I don't know if you're if you want to discuss it here, but you'll be. I'd be happy if you did. I, you know, this might be an interesting opportunity to be innovative yourselves, right? Um, uh, to develop the platform itself. So, is that something that you can discuss here? Anything that's going to roll out soon? Maybe, maybe that's not really your purview. I'm not <laughs> sure. But um, yeah. I Look, mean, I, uh, you know, any, any new sort of bells and whistles potentially could be launched, even in while you guys are all working out of your homes or what do you think? 
Yeah, look, I think uh, I, I think working from home. Uh, I'll 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 dance around the question. Uh, I, I think working from home gives you the opportunity uh, to, you know, uh, take a deeper look at the platform itself. Take a deeper look at kind of your internal systems uh, and how your how different teams are collaborating or where we can collaborate better for the future. Uh, that's been, if you're looking for some silver linings and all this, that that's been a real silver silver lining for us. So we we have had the ability to uh, to to really focus. Um, I shouldn't say more than we have because it has been a big focus of Visio uh, over the past few years, but really focus on the future. And as this shift to streaming occurs, where where do we need to innovate? So uh, I, I don't have anything to uh, to announce now, but. I think there's some overarching, you know, concepts that, you know, aren't necessarily unique to us, but things we're, we're focused on. And that's new, unique content solutions, as I've mentioned earlier. Uh, I'd, I'd, love to, I'd love to hear what, you know, what that thinking is, that thought leadership is like, what kinds of things you guys think should be put out into the market to, to yeah, capture well, more eyeballs, more business? I, I think there's a couple. Yeah, I think there's a couple things that are, you know, that are interesting. One is voice, right? I think, you know, we talk about search and discovery and we've, we've clearly seen in this marketplace uh, uh, increased yeah. usage of search and discovery. So voice, uh, what can we bring to our consumers from a voice perspective? And um, that's of interest to us and in trying to innovate in that. Uh, I think interactivity. I think as people get more familiar with the platform, what we can do to help get consumers to engage more either with the content or, or with our brands and advertisers. Uh, I think those those two things are are of critical importance. And then I think within our own our own platform, uh, ease of use within search and discovery, right? How can we continue to evolve the platform to have the best possible consumer experience? Because for us, everything drives off that, right? If the consumers don't like don't like uh, the experience when they get on there. There's nothing else matters. Well, those are some very important things uh, yeah. to be explored. And I, I know that um, in this distributed environment, it's kind of tough to get that stuff, uh, you know, developed and launched. But uh, it sounds to me like since you were able to launch all those content partners, that there's some kind of um, ma good management, you know, behind the scenes, perhaps. We're, uh, you guys we're, are we're the hardest working, you know, people and um, yeah. proactive at TVOT, and we really appreciate that. So I hope I hope these things can get out into the market for you. Yeah, appreciate that. Look, we're uh, we are um, we're a big company, but we uh, we are our founder is an entrepreneur, um, and you know he has the philosophy of we continue to execute and we continue to grind like we're a startup. So we'll we'll continue to do that uh today and in the in the future so uh while we face this challenge i think it's it's critical for us to continue to focus on innovation um i guess my my last question is is are uh, do you do you see that um that the i mean the 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 report that you did recently was over was in march and in a little bit of april um the data you're pulling in now are you seeing the trends change at all um or it's still kind of the stuff you already mentioned was the consistent the current stuff no it, it, it's actually it, it, we're actually continuing to see the numbers grow so i think we saw uh in the report we put out 77 percent uh increase in usage uh or what we call sessions uh in our in our platform uh i think from pre-covid through uh yesterday uh that number had grown up to 88 percent so we're just continuing to see that that increase uh, in usage. So all the trends are there. Uh, you know, I think um, there's still, you know, TVs are still being sold, right? And we're we're still trying to find find ways. And the best, to buy, best Buy will deliver, I think, or you have to come to them and they'll deliver to the curb or something like that. But I can imagine they're not doing too badly. No, there's, look, there's a, a you know, there's still a lot of stored Walmart's still a target. Uh, there's still opportunities for customers to go in and uh, and 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 purchase televisions uh, within the within the stores themselves. So, well, sounds good. Um, I know my daughter likes watching things on big screens, even though she's you know a 12 year she's 12 yeah. years old. 
So, you know, we have family uh, evenings where we watch on the big screen here. Yeah. So that's yeah. it. All right. Uh, I think that's it for me, but thank you so much. And thanks for joining yeah. us. Yeah, appreciate um, it. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. And I'll, uh, I, I hope you enjoyed your first session here. This is all good. Yeah, I'll get the lighting sorted out for the next one. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Thank you so much, Mike. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in real life or at um, TVOT online. Yeah, appreciate um, it. A lot of things going on. Thank you so much, everybody. That is Mike. He is Mike O'Donnell, SVP Platforms. I always forget everyone's title at the last second. Um, platform business at Vizio. And Vizio is Vizio, V-I-Z-I-O.com. I always, when I go to Best Buy, I always see, well, when I used to go to Best Buy, I always see somebody walking out the door with a Vizio device, a Vizio <laughs> All right, uh, I'm Tracy Swedlow, and this is Television Nation. Please contact us if you'd like to be on the show, too, and we have a lot going on and more to announce, so stay tuned here on Television Nation. Thank you so much, Mike. All right, thank you very much, Tracy.